Here is his first temptation. Another out of control dog comes running into the arena. As dog trainers, we see this all the time. We see people who have not got any understanding of how to train a dog. They've been to clicker classes, treat training classes, and they think that socialization is let your dog do anything it wants. This woman had no control over this dog at all. The dog was just doing what it wanted to do. Look at her look. And the dog's just going away from it. It's now picked up the ball that we had. So we've, we've picked that. The dog's gone straight back to the other dog. And that's where you can create a problem. That's what you create a problem. And people say, oh, no, you must let them socialize. She didn't have a clue. She couldn't do nothing. She couldn't get the dog back. She kept calling it. The dog is not interested because the value of messing around and playing with the other dog is higher. At this point, we're just controlling the situation and not escalating the situation. And John is calling the dog in. Look at the dog, head on head, confrontation. If there was two dogs there, look, she's had to grab hold of the dog and she hasn't got a clue what she's doing. Now, some people would say, you shouldn't be training dogs using discipline. You shouldn't be training dogs using punishment. That dog has got no training on it at all. She can hardly put the dog on the lead. It's pulling. She has got no control. But we have to see this. So what we have to do is we have to make sure our dogs can cope with this pressure. Turn the pressure off and sit and calm. John hasn't put the lead on the dog on purpose. We're sitting the dog there and we're teaching the dog. It's unacceptable when you say, go and play, you can play. But when you say you can't play, it's unacceptable. As simple as that. So the dog doesn't see other dogs as, ah, I can do what I want. We're training this dog where she has got no clue. She thinks she can walk across Kit Hill and come across every dog and every dog will want to play with her dog. It doesn't work like that. That's why she's got an unsteady dog. Right. No interest in coming back. No, no, no way at all. And, and then she couldn't stop him picking the ball or nothing, right? Let's have a go. Give John the lead. You go out there and play ball with him. Let's see what he does with you. Look at the focus. See, see, see how more focused he is with you, yeah. with that hand. Yeah. See, he's like obsessed with it, look. Yeah. Okay, tell him to sit. Lovely. Right, well done, that was really nice. What I would have a tendency to do now is when he comes in, I'll just blow the stop whistle yeah. and start teaching him to sit now and then take it off him instead of going round you a couple of times. He didn't go round you, he came in and give it you. But look at the focus on you with what's happening. Me and John have been working together. He doesn't know who's pressing the collar. He hasn't worked that out. No. But what he's worked out is he's not had any fallout with you. No. But he has had John have to correct him and I've corrected him because John's got to step up and correct him at the right time. Yeah, yeah. But look look what he does with you, look. Okay, so throw it out, time to sit and throw it out. Good. Right. Let him go out there and then let him go and as soon as he's done ten steps, say come here. When are you ready? No. Come here! Good lad, never touch the button at all. Never touch the button at all, and the dog broke away. Yeah, yeah. So the focus on the ball that he would have run in before, he said, right now, got the message, I'm learning. Yeah. And he never got touched on the button. Because I don't want to touch the button if I don't have to, no. but when I'm teaching the behavior, yeah, yeah. and I've taught the behavior, and I'm just bridging it with the e-collar, yeah. then it's very light, it's really light, it's 15. And I'm not having to turn it up in that situation. Yeah. We haven't gone above 20. And like John put that collar on and felt it and said he couldn't feel nothing at 10 and 20, he could just feel it. Yeah, yeah. And so look what the dog's doing with you now. The dogs will work with anybody with less desire and drive and obsessive behavior yeah. because we've just brought it down two notches. Yeah. I keep saying to people on so many of my videos, I can turn drive up and down like a volume button on a radio yeah. and it's knowing how to do it. Right. Yes, you go into that point of making it slightly sticky, 
but you have to assess each dog individually and that dog can take it to that level yeah. if i'd gone in higher he'd go i'm not retrieving yeah i'm not retrieving i don't want that that causes all sorts of problems. Yeah. I want that dog focused, wants to play the game, but remembers the lesson he learned. Yeah. So we've given him a short, sharp lesson in two or three areas at the right time. And we've used the aggression, the growling, as part of that. Yeah. And we've used the recall, come here, as part of it as well. Right, what I want you to do is I want you to take your dog out to the <clears throat> steps. There's, a, there's a, a weed out there just in front of the steps, look. Yeah. Sit the dog there and see if you can come back with making the dog sit there. Okay, well done. You should have told me your training because I would have done you instead of John because you, you've got more organisation skills. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that she's interested. Oh, yeah. It's really nice. She, she does well, to be honest. Yeah, it's lovely. That'll do, Sharon. Sit him there. Bring to you. Come here. Okay, sit him there. You come back to me. <clears throat> okay, turn around, face the dog. You're going to call the dog into you. As soon as he's into you, you're going to throw the retrieve out and send him instantly. When you're ready. Now. Okay. Lovely. And he gave it up beautiful. So let's ask the question. Did I use the e-collar or did I not use the e-collar on that discipline there just? No. I did. Oh, you did. But you couldn't see it, could you? No. There was no way you could read that situation. No. Now tell me where did you think I used it? At what point? When he was coming back with the ball? No. When he was coming back without the ball, you said, come here. Because I keep telling you, we, we're pairing that, strengthening that bridge between come here and the tap, 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 tap. Once you sent him, no tap at all. He just went out, got the ball. I don't want to tap it at all with the ball in his mouth at this stage. Okay. Right? I don't want to tap it at all. I did hear yeah. when he would come up on the bank, but it was very low. If I'd done it hard, he would have dropped the ball on the bank and come back down. Yeah. We don't want that. No. We want the retrieve to hand. You've got the retrieve to hand. We don't want to ruin that. No. Right? Some dogs were not retrieved to hand. It doesn't mean you've used an e-collar. It means that they're just soft. He has got a tendency to want to hold it and say, I'm not giving it up. Now he's giving it up to both of you, surrendering it. He's learning for association that the game continues. The focus you've got with that dog, with that ball, is beautiful. That's a plus point. Real plus point. Mm. Everyone, everyone else around here can't do that. No. You've got that focus there. That doesn't mean he's perfect, but you've, you've got that foundation to build on. He's only 16 months old. He wants to play that game. The, the best thing about the dog is you've put the drive in, but you just let it go too far. Yeah. Now you're bringing it back down, but then you're gonna have a wonderful dog. So you've got to look at this in, 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 yes, we messed the dog up a little bit, but we've gone the other way now and it's far better. So now, Say, sit up and throw it out there. There you go. Now move out to the tree there. That way, look. Watch your dog. Hand up to the dog just like that. That's it. Now move out there. Lovely. Now you're going to bring the dog into you and you're going to send him as soon as he's into you. Good. Well, that's it now. John's, John's not going to be the superstar on the video. It's going to be you, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> She's a better trainer, to be fair. Eh? She's a better trainer. Oh, I like it. I like the confidence. Lovely. Always. Always. That's it, eh? If you carry on, I'll, I'll be taking that uh, e-collar over and putting it on you. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. That's lovely. That's lovely. Look at that focus. Yeah. Okay, throw it out. Pretend to stay. Throw it out. Okay, you're going to send him, and then you're going to say, come here. But let him go, go. See, so he knows, look. He heard, he heard what I said. 
<laughs> That's how clever he is. He knew. Send him. Now, come here. See what happened? See what happened? Yeah. Soon he got out there, I tapped him very lightly and he broke away. He wasn't gonna, he was gonna push through it. Yeah. Not not the button, because I hadn't touched it at that time. He was gonna push through the command and he was that close to it. Yeah. But but we said no, you listen. But see what he did, he came back to you. So go back to the tree, call him into you and send him straight away. Yeah. Now, there you go. So you See, he was thinking, are you going to do it again? Yeah, he, do he does. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Sharon, walk across there with him. Well done. So look, he's looking at the other dog. Look, come here. There you go. Just touched him at the right moment. Yeah, yeah. Just to say to him, I know you're focused on that and they're playing ball. And that's a great temptation because you can see them playing ball yeah, yeah. and he might say, hang on, I want to join in with that. Look, he's looking, but he's staying with you. Yeah. Now walk that way, Sharon, on purpose. I'm controlling the situation. Now walk towards the dogs. Now you don't need to say come here yet. Keep going. He's not supposed to go anywhere. Now, there you go, back towards me. Walk back towards me. See how I'm tapping the button at the right time when he just breaks that distance. Yeah, yeah. So if you're out walking with him and he starts to do that, you're just tapping him at that very low level. He's not going to jump. He's not going to cry out. He's not going to be like, oh, he's not liking this. Yeah. He's working on 20 there, look. Yeah. So I upped it slightly yeah, yeah. because of the temptation of the other dogs. Yeah. Right, say, so come here. Come here. Good lad. Sit him up, give him a break oh. for a minute. That's excellent. So, so you, I'm showing you, so when you go back, yeah. you can put him in this situation, like go for walks with him, yeah, yeah. play the ball game with him, focus, you've got that focus, that's great. But use the other people and the other dogs. Oh, yeah. So I will walk towards them yeah. once I know I've got the control and the dog understands the language of the e-collar. Yeah, yeah. The importance of this training with the e-collar is if the dog understands what you want it to do, yeah. it's clear, it's precise, it's like a clicker. This is my clicker. So you go clicker training, click food, click food. Yeah. This is click, praise, yeah. good lad. Come here, good lad, and praise. Yeah, yeah. Without praise, it's the same as a relationship. If your missus is doing everything for you and you never praise her, she's gonna think, I do everything and you never give me praise. <laughs> but if you give them praise, if you give somebody praise all the time, yeah, they want more and more. Yeah. So you, you, it, it's balance, it's, it's happy balance, having the balance. That bloke's dogs look are running around, but they're not racing across here. They're focused on each other look, yeah. right? So walk across that way on purpose, on purpose. I'll get the dog back. But look, see what he's doing? Yeah. See how he's with you? Yeah. Right, now turn direction and walk towards the steps. There you go, following. I'm not touching him at all on the collar. What would he have done two days ago? What would he have done? Tell me, guys. No, he would have gone, yeah. He would have gone, yeah. So he's learning for association yeah. because he already knows what the recall is. Yeah. And all we're doing, we're tapping into all that hard work that you two have put into this dog. You've put the hard work into it. Yeah. But what I'm doing is I'm strengthening it. I'm bridging it with this. Mm. So he then knows at a distance I can control him. Yeah. Now, we've only gone in twice firmer. Yeah. Only twice. Yeah. I think we went to 40 at 1.30. Yeah, we did. But we, we're not using it up there. We're using it down there. Yeah. Now, why are we using it down there? So we've got somewhere to go if we have to. That's exactly the same as you screaming and shouting at the dog all the time. If you're screaming and shouting, it only listens to you when you scream and shout. But dogs realise that you're flustered and they go, ah, you can't do nothing about it. I'm going to chase these dogs. I'm going to do what I want to do. He's focused, look. He was looking at them. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. And um, where, where do the positive people go wrong? Treats, look at me, treats, look at me, treats, yeah, look at me. Yeah. So the dog looks at them for the treats, but when the next temptation comes in, it's more value than the treats. The treats go out the window, no control. So there, another situation, look. And this is why I like coming here with a dog like him that needs that extra work. It's all right saying, only take your dog with it, no other, no, look, there you go, look, look, bull. 
There you go. Now, if he wants to push through it, I'll bring him back quick. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I don't want that. I want him to come back on that stem. So the temptation is there. It doesn't mean you've cracked it straight away. It means the more you do it, look at him. He's, he's looking at it, right? Now move backwards, this towards me. Move backwards towards me. Look what he did. Mm. He followed. Come here. Tell him. At that point there, good lad. So there you go. So walk back out that way. Watch what happens. He's going with you. Yeah. He, you're not saying come here. He's going with you because he sees you as leadership. Right, now head towards the dogs. Head straight out there with them. Look what he's doing, look. See the tail on him now, John? Just right. Yep, yep. It's not dominant. Yep. It's just right. It's where it should be. Look, and he's checked her there, look. Yep. Automatically checked her, look. He's knowing. Come here. Tell him. That's the way. That's the perfect position there. Now move and change direction. Watch what happens. He'll see you. He'll go with you. See that? That's leadership. That's leadership. I understand now why John likes to be dominated. <laughs> <laughs> that was lovely. Yeah, you're the better trainer. <laughs> we'll edit that bit. No, we won't. <laughs> yeah, that was lovely. That was lovely. And that's what dog training is all about. Dog training is about simplicity. Now, Yes, it's me giving that verbal cue out there, and it should be you. Yeah. But how did you know when to put the verbal cue in? Yeah, yeah. But when you give the verbal cue, you just press. Yeah, yeah. So you go, come here, tap, 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 so which and one he comes. Which one? So, so look. Explain it again. Right, that one there is pager. So you don't want to. Use it. No, that's just vibrate. Yeah. Right. That one is continuous. C for continuous, and N for Nick. All right. Yeah. We, we, and that's and so if I just want to go. If you just come here a sec, if I just want to, I'm not, if I just want that top one, it will just do that. Yeah. If I press that one, it will do. Okay. And what happens, it's, it's regulated with a, the way it's designed. Yeah. That it will only last so many seconds if you kept, kept say, say you sat on that in, on your seat in your car. Say you sat, sat on that. Yeah. Okay, just put the lead on him for a sec. And that's what I would do in that situation. I just put the lead on him and keep him tight, keep him down. That's it. Push him down. Say, so, so, sit down. Sit up. That's it. And use the situation to control it to yourself. No, back down again. He's got to sit. You asked him to do sit it. Sit up. There you go. So you're saying no. He's there. Just because he's there, that doesn't mean you can come up. Yeah. Because I don't want to tap, tap that button no. with these two dogs together. Yeah. Yeah. I do not want association of that dog gets the stim, sees it as a negative, and then turns nasty on that dog. I don't yeah. want that. I want dogs to be friendly. Yeah. So what I'm saying, that was the best situation to do it there. Now you can take it off. So the reason, the reason that we, this here is, is C, it's continuous. It goes yeah. tap, 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 tap. But after about 12 seconds, it cuts itself off. I, I'd have to read the instruction again, but it's, I've read it. And it cuts itself off for a safety factor. Yeah. So you'd have to put the, let the finger off it and then put the finger back on it. Then it'd give another 12 seconds. But as soon as you take your finger off, yeah. it stops giving that tap, tap, tap. Okay. So if the dog is going out there yeah. and you say, come here and you press that, and he's coming in. You leave the pressure on if it's really low until he gets here, and then you take the finger off the button. Okay. So what you're saying is pressure on if come back to me, pressure off when you're with me. Yeah, yeah. So guess what the dog says? I'll stay with you because all the time I'm with you, the okay. pressure is off. Yeah. yeah. If you're zapping the dog at your feet, yeah. the dog's thinking, hang on, where do I turn this pressure off? Yeah, yeah. So we're teaching the dog at a distance. If I call you and you come back to me, I'll just keep my finger on the button but I'll take it off when you get get within a foot of me and I'll take the pressure off. You only dial it up if the dog's not listening. Yeah, yeah. If the dog's not listening, I, I'm not being funny, I could let that dog go and play with the dog over there for 15 minutes, have great fun and, not, and be well away from me. I could then say, come here. And if he didn't come back to me, I guarantee I'd get that dog back. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want that. I want the dog to learn for association on a walk with you if it chases something that you don't want it to chase, a deer or you know, it, it, or, or another dog, then you, before it gets to the dog, you've got to stop the behaviour and change the behaviour and say, I want you back here. Don't let it escalate so it gets right on top of the dog. So you don't want really to be tapping if it's right on top of the dog, yeah, yeah. especially turning it up. You go, look again, look, yeah. look, there's the ball. There's the temptation, right? You can't ask for more temptation with a no. dog that loves a ball, can you? No, no. Right, but look what he's done. He stayed exactly there. That's excellent. 
he's now seeing another dog out there, look. But this is what I said, this is the gladiator's arena and I use it for my own benefit. So now he's seeing somebody running, another dog running. And at the end of it, I want him to go wrong to put him right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I don't want to punish him just for no reason. But is this punishment? It's correction, definitely correction. Is it hurting the dog? Yeah. No. Can I stop an unwanted behaviour? Yes, I go in firmer. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not, I'm just bridging this behaviour because I'm saying to the dog, listen to me and everything's going to be wonderful. What a difference. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he switched off. Eh? He switched off beautiful. Good boy. Good boy. Now I'd give him a ball out there. Yeah, yeah. Go on then. Send him straight away. Yeah. There you go. That's for doing what you wanted him to do. There's your positive. Good lad. Good boy. Lovely. See. Are they doing it on purpose? Hey, come here. Are they doing it on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> you could ask for a bigger temptation, could you? Have we set that up? Do you only press, are you only uh, doing the nick, like, so when we were getting him to turn on the whistle? Is that when you were doing the two nicks? Uh, oh, when we were hunting? Yeah. Yeah. So, so on the top button, Yeah. top button for turn whistle. So as you go, as you go tap, tap, as you go tap, tap, it's on the whistle, pip, pip, it's just nick, nick on the top button, nick, nick, all right? Yeah. On that top button. Yeah. All right. So like I say, I like to train far away from the madding crowd, but in certain situations, I want to put the dog under great temptation. For a dog that's got so much desire to retrieve, this is exactly what this dog needs. It needs to just to sit there and switch off, not go off to play the game with the other dog, not get involved unless he's told he can get involved. There's times for dogs to play, but socialization, people think you've got to socialize the dog with every other dog in sight. You create the problem by doing this. You don't want to create this problem. You want to nip this problem in the butt. If you allow your dog to race up to every other dog and say hello and he's only being friendly this is what we get up here everybody's dog comes running across and says he's only being friendly how do you know it's going to be friendly and we don't want to change the mindset of this dog this dog wants to play he's not an aggressive dog with other dogs we talk about pressure and release John was asking me about the heel work, saying that they've been trying to work on the heel work because I showed them a little bit of heel work in five minutes. And I'm explaining about pressure and release. Every part of the training is pressure and release. If the lead has got a loop in it and the dog is comfortable, the dog's going to enjoy the game. He's going to enjoy the walk. But what's happened, the dog's been conditioned on a short lead, been allowed to pull and they find it hard to bring him back. So you have to go backwards to go forwards again, and you have to put the dog in the situation to show the dog that if the lead is loose, you're comfortable and the dog's comfortable. If it goes tight, you've got to show the dog it's not going to get what it wants when it goes tight. So the dog learns to turn off the pressure again. Same principle as the e-collar.